God. The Lord bless each one of you. Go ahead and take your seat. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be on the winning side. Baptism. It's going to be a good morning. It's going to be a good day. Amen. We're going to be going to American Lake Park. There are directions in the foyer. And if you don't know where it is, even by the map, you can follow. And uh, we will get you there. We haven't done it. We haven't used that part. I like it though. It's got the. Uh, it's got a place for the uh, airplanes. Ooh, nice. Yeah, it's, it's a good place. I like it. So, I want to preach this morning. A message entitled "Who Stole Your Smile?" <laughs> or "Who Lifted Your Laughter?" What happened to your joy? Yes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that is able to break any work of the enemy God. Your power is able to liberate every soul. I thank you, God, for your hand upon us this morning. Mold us and shape us Make us into your own image. And Lord, we give you praise for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We got a prayer request for Jim Reed's eyes. Carrie, can you hit me? We <laughs> <laughs> need to pray that Jim will learn how to duck. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Terry Shore, why don't you pray and ask God's hand on Jim? <laughs> Lord, we thank you, God, that you are our great physician, Lord. You created us and you know every one of our needs, Lord. You know our infirmities and the attacks that we endure, Lord God. And you are well able, Jesus. You paid the price for our people. God, your word says that if we will ask you, Lord, that you will do, Lord, just as you heal others, God, you can heal them. Lord, I yes, thank Lord. you and praise you that you are a God that wants to see us well, that wants to see us prosper, yes, loves us and cares about us because we are yours, Lord God. I bind the spirit of infirmity that will come on in God, and I thank you and praise you that you are bringing healing right now, Lord. Yes. As my voice is coming up to you, Lord God, the healing is coming right now on him, Lord God. <coughs> and any other infirmity that may be in this place, Lord, that you would heal it, Lord, so that you would get the glory and you yes. would get the honor, Lord. It, yes, it Lord. is to you, Lord God, that we ask and we give all the glory and the praise, Lord. And thank you for being our God and us you allow us to be your children. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, we thank you and we praise you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Prayer and thanksgiving. Why do you give thanks? Because the Lord has done it. 
We know it. Amen. You know, that's the great thing is we don't have to wonder. Amen. You know, it's not like ordering something on the internet, you wonder if it's going to show up. When you pray, we, you know it's going to happen. There's just no doubt about it. It's the will of God. And so we can thank Him ahead of time because we know that even before we see it, that it's done. And then we live like it. Amen. Amen. We live like it. A friend of mine got up every morning. He was thanking God for uh, healing his eyes. He'd reach over, put on his glasses, and say, Thank you, Lord, for healing my eyes. Every morning, he'd reach over and put on his glasses and <coughs> say, Lord, thank you for healing my eyes. And one morning, he went to work and his head was killing him. He went to the eye doctor and the eye doctor said, well, I know why your head is. There's nothing wrong with your eyes and you stop wearing those glasses. <laughs> Lord, thank you for healing my eyes. Amen. Luke, the 10th chapter. Starting in verse 1. After this, I'm reading out of the NIV. Now, now, after this, the Lord appointed the 70 and sent them out two by two ahead of him. Every town, some, some uh, translations say 72. Uh, and place where he was about to go. He told them the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest, therefore to send out laborers into his harvest field. Go. I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals. Don't greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give to you. For the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter into a town and are welcome, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick that are there. Tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter into a town and you're not welcome, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town may wipe off our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazan. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted up to the heavens? No. You'll go down to hell. Whoever listens to me, whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. But whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. And they returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And he replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, 
Do not rejoice that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. At that time, Jesus, full of the joy, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and the learned, and you've revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. Joy. Thank you, Jesus. There, I picked up a couple of quotes from people who felt that they knew what it would take to make someone happy. It's amazing what some people think will make you happy. You know, what one person says will make people happy varies with other people. Daniel Boone said, all you need for happiness is a good gun, a good horse, and a good wife. <laughs> Albert Schweitzer said, Albert Schweitzer said, happiness is nothing more than good health and a bad memory. <laughs> Johnny Carson said, happiness is your dentist telling you it won't hurt and then having him catch his hand in the drill. <laughs> Joan Rivers said, happiness at my age is breathing. <laughs> I read what was written in uh, the Jewish Encyclopedia, and it said that there was no language that has as many words for joy and rejoicing as the language of the Old Testament Hebrew. In the Old Testament, there are 13 Hebrew language roots used in 27 different words. They're primarily used for some aspect of joy <coughs> or joyful participation in worshiping God. Amen. Amen. So there's absolutely no other language like the Hebrew language that has as many words for joy. That ought to tell you something. Uh -huh. Why does God have that many words for joy? Well, I would dare say it because God expects to have a joyful people. He expects to have a thankful people. People that are filled with rejoicing. So the question is, how come we aren't? How come there are so many discouraged, unhappy disappointed Christians. If there is the expectation of living in joy, then why? Why do so many people suffer sorrow? And if it's possible to have joy, you know, do you, how many of you believe it's possible to live in joy? Amen. I, I don't mean not, not having any problems. I'm talking about living in joy. Amen. You know, there's a difference between not having problems and having joy. Yeah. Because I know folks that have a lot of things and they're miserable. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what they have, they'll always be miserable because they're miserable. Yeah. And then there's other people that they don't need anything. They can just be happy. So the question is, how can we be happy? How can we have joy in our lives? How can we be thankful? Filled with rejoicing. In the text that we read, the... Uh, it says that the 70 return with joy. Amen. And then in the 21st verse, it said, at that time Jesus, full of joy, through the Holy Spirit. 
I like that. Jesus was full of joy. Mm -hmm. Jesus was full of joy. Mm -hmm. It's funny when people think about Jesus or they draw pictures of Jesus or paintings of Jesus, hardly ever do you see him smile. Mm -hmm. He always has that kind of pious look on his face, but you never see him laughing. I can't picture the Lord walking all those years with the disciples and never laughing. That's right. You know, when I think about Jesus, I picture the Lord telling jokes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he said funny things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talked about it being easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. I mean, that's kind of funny if you think about it. The Lord was full of joy through the Holy Spirit. The 70 were sent out to do some specific things. They were sent out on a missionary trip. Just like you and I are. Every day you are sent out on a missionary journey. As a Christian, you don't just get out of bed and slouch your way through the day. Every day you get up, you are sent out by God on a missionary journey. You're called by God to do something. And if you forget that, you'll miss it. Don't ever forget that God has called you to accomplish a great work for Him. Yes. When the 70 went out, they were given authority over the devils. Jesus told them to heal the sick and to preach that the kingdom of God was at hand. And when they came back, they were thrilled. They didn't come back disappointed. They came back excited. They came back stoked to the eyeball. Why? Because it worked. Because it worked, church. They were thrilled to death because it worked. They had done what nobody else was doing. They went into cities and they preached, and people were healed. Yes. Demons were cast out. Yes. And they were excited about it. Come on. They knew that nothing could stand in their way. And then Jesus did something that they didn't expect. He kind of rained on their parade. He said, don't rejoice. That demons submit to you. But rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. Why did he say that? Why did he tell them that they were rejoicing in the wrong things? Because they were. You know, the Lord told the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth. So that means the Lord told the truth. And the truth was they were rejoicing in the wrong thing. Yeah. And he knew that if he left them thinking that way that they were setting themselves up for discouragement. Jesus wanted them to understand that there were two kinds of joy that they could have. Mm -hmm. They could have the joy that the world has or they could have the joy that God gives. If you're writing this down, you ought, to, you ought to write this down for sure. The joy of this world is based on what you can do. How much money can I make? How much position or fame can I have? 
How much pleasure can I enjoy? Joy for people in the world is based on them. Look at what I did. Look at what I accomplished. Look at what I attained. Well, I pulled myself up by the bootstraps. That's what Jesus was saying. Don't rejoice that the spirits were submitting to you. Rejoice that your names were written in the book of life. In other words, don't rejoice in what you've done. Rejoice in what God's done for you. Amen. Don't rejoice in what you've done. Rejoice in what God has done for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus said that they should rejoice in the fact that God wrote their names down. Yes. And because their names were written down in heaven, God gave them access to all the power of heaven. But to obtain all the power of heaven, you have to be plugged in. Now, I brought this for that purpose. You've heard uh, foot washing services? Well, we're going to have a pant pressing service. I'm just kidding. We're not going to do that. <laughs> no, not my legs. I know a guy burned his legs. He, he pressed his pants while they were on him. I'm telling you what. <laughs> How do you go to go into the hospital with a third degree burn on your leg that looks exactly like that <laughs> and say I did it myself? I mean, how stupid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my wife pressed him while I was laying there. <laughs> that doesn't sound much better. Okay, we got this iron. It's a great invention. You, know, you pour a little water in there, you plug it in, and it can get the wrinkles out of your pants. Mm -hmm. Make them look almost brand new. Mm -hmm. You can do that as long as it's plugged in. Mm -hmm. You can do it as long as it's plugged in. Mm -hmm. But if you don't plug it in, it's not going to get hot. Yep. You don't plug it in, this won't be anything more than a paperweight. Yep. Jesus said, if we're plugged in, we can do anything. Yep. Jesus said, if you're plugged in, you can ask, mm -hmm. and it'll be done. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, if you're plugged in, you can tell the devil and he'll listen to you. Yeah. And then he said, but don't rejoice because you can do those things. Rejoice that you can be plugged in. Thank God we can be saved. Our names can be written in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus told them that their joy was based on God. He said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. I have given you. How can we get it? How can we get it so confused, church? It isn't us. He said, I have given you. It's all about God. This is not a man thing. Joy is not a man thing. No. Joy is not a woman thing. It is a God thing. Yes. Joy comes from the Lord. Yes. Jesus 
had joy. Said that uh, at that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit. Where did Jesus get his joy? I just said it. Holy what? Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It said right there that the Lord was full of joy through the Holy Spirit. I see light bulbs going off. There's joy that can come through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. That's what made Jesus joyful. Was that He was full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And when He was full of the Holy Spirit and filled with joy, what, was, what did He do? The Bible said that He praised God. That He worshipped. That he prayed. And he didn't just pray. He thanked God. He thanked the Father. He said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Because you've hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for it was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. And no one knows who the Son is except the Father. And no one who knows the Father, no one knows who the Father is except the Son. And to those whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Jesus received His joy through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joy is a God thing. Remember that. If joy is not about what you can do, I'm gonna you've got to catch this part. Otherwise, you have just flat wasted the whole first part. Joy is not about what you can do. It's about what God can do. Amen. And it's about what God can do through you. Amen. You know, of all the people on the earth, you ought to be the one most joyful. That's right. And yet there's miserable, bummed out, unhappy Christians. Ah, wow, that doesn't even make sense. We ought to be the happiest of all people. Of course the devil assaults us, but that isn't what joy is all about. We should be talking and singing about joy all the time. God's will for you to be joyful. What's that song? I've got the joy down in my heart. Yes. We sing songs like you do, do, do. Yeah. But we sing those songs, but we walk out the door and live like we're, you know, miserable. Amen. We smile in church and we, we walk out the door. We swear at people driving down the road. God forgive. It shouldn't be like that. You know, it's God's will that you be joyful. I know sometimes we don't feel joyful. And I know sometimes we don't feel like rejoicing. But that's what sets, separates us from the world. Paul said in Philippians... Rejoice. Again I say rejoice. How many of you got kids or grandkids or both? <laughs> Have you ever had to tell your kids or grandkids more than one time to do something? Why? Well, because they didn't listen. <coughs> why did why did Paul have to repeat himself? Because we don't pay attention. Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. God says, listen up. I'm writing it on the blackboard one more time. Rejoice. Rejoice. 
he repeated that because rejoicing doesn't come naturally to us. Can I get you to pay attention just for a couple minutes more? The joy of this world is going to fail you. The joy of this world will fail you. You need the joy of the Lord. Yes. Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. If your joy or my joy is focused on what you can do or what you can accumulate or what you can possess or what you can brag about, then you can lose it. If our joy is in our possessions, what happens when we lose our possessions? Well, we lose our joy. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same with houses, health, jobs, bank accounts, or relationships. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if your joy is based on any one of those things, then if you lose those things, you can lose your joy. I've seen people come to church say, God, all I want is someone to love me, someone to care about. And so they get, they meet somebody and they get their eyes on that person rather than on God. Yeah. And then that relationship doesn't work out the way they thought it was going to. And as soon as that happens, they're miserable. They walk away from God. I've, I've seen husbands and wives. They get into a fight. So instead of going to church, they get mad. And they won't go to church. Why didn't you go to church? Because we got we had a fight. So what? That's the best time to go to church. Thank God at least you got peace there. At least you won't be yelling at you while you're there. Yeah. Shoot, I'd get to church and wouldn't leave. <laughs> Hang on to the horns of the altar. Amen. <laughs> Dear God, I ain't leaving. <laughs> if we base our joy on things, if we lose those things, we can lose our joy. Matthew 6 says, Don't store up treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. Everything that you are attracted to in the world is either going to get broken, get stolen, rust, or die. Yeah. Amen. Uh, you just missed a good thing. <laughs> Everything you're attracted to do in the world is going to get broken, get stolen, rust or die. But if your joy is in God, you can make it through any storm there is. If your joy is based in God, it doesn't matter what the devil does. Because you can make it. People that realize that God is the center of everything and God is what brings them joy, those people can survive tragedy. They can be healed from any heartache. They can handle any hardship the world brings to them because their joy is in the Lord. And that joy is their strength. As Christians, we don't get our joy from this world. We get it from the Lord. And since the world didn't give it to you, the world can't take it away. Can't take it away. Amen. Amen. I read a story I wanted to share with you in closing here. A man on a missionary short missionary trip 
was leading worship at a leper colony on the island of Tobago. There was a time for one more song in the service. So we asked if anyone had a, re a request for a song. And a woman who had been facing away from the pulpit turned around. And he said it was the most hideous face that he had ever seen. The woman's nose and ears were entirely gone. The disease of leprosy had destroyed her lips. And she lifted her fingerless hand in the air and asked, can we please sing, count your many blessings? Overcome with emotion, this man left the service and he was followed out by another man from the team. And he said, I guess you'll never be able to sing that song again. And he replied, yes, I'll be able to sing it again. But I guarantee you, I'll never sing it the same way again. How was that woman able to sing that song? Count you many blessings. Because she learned that the joy of the Lord was her strength. She learned that without Jesus, there was nothing worth anything in her life. What is it that makes you happy this morning? You say, well, God makes me happy, but everything else makes me miserable. You know, if you've got God, you don't have to be miserable. You ever hang out with people that are miserable all the time? It's a drag. I watch people that are walking around frowning and cussing under their breath. And then they turn to somebody and say, you ought to give your life to God and be like me. And I'm thinking, well, why would they want to? Amen. Why to be like Jesus? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Let's bow our heads. The greatest thing that could ever happen to your life is not winning the lottery. The greatest thing that could ever happen to us is not getting the new car or meeting a different person. thing that will bring us joy is God. This morning, if you have been focusing your attention on things, you know, if you, I'll say this, if, if you live your life without smiling, if you live your life complaining, You need to repent. You need to just say, God, forgive me. Why? Well, because God says that we can walk in joy. And if we're walking in misery, then our eyes are not on Jesus. Well, you don't know what I've gone through. No, but I do know what the Bible says Jesus went through so that you and I could have our name written in the book of life. And because of that, we can have joy. I want to pray you can walk in the joy that God offers. That you can walk in the joy that Jesus had. Because if we can walk in the power of Jesus, we can walk in the joy of Jesus.
and I want to pray that God will touch you. This morning, if you want God to touch your life, if you want your eyes refocused, you want to walk in the joy that only God can bring, I want you to stand up with me. And we're going to confess to the Lord that He is the center of our life. And that we look to Him. Pray after me. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I ask You to forgive me for walking in depression looking to the things of this world to make me happy because I see that these things can never make me happy only you can be the center of my life be the focus of my attention let your joy fill my heart let your joy fill my heart. And I thank you. And I thank you. And I praise you. And I praise you. For all that you've done for me. For all that you've done for me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Listen, we're going to have baptism, church picnic at American Lake. The map is in the foyer. If you still need someone to follow, you can follow us or you can follow. Does anybody else know exactly where it's at? It's right off at Gravelly Lake to Veterans Drive. Take a left on Veterans Drive. Go on down. You'll see it on the left-hand side. But if you need someone to follow, you can follow us.